So when you have just three blocks animating, there's still quite a bit of lag happening on the server. Are you guys putting unnecessary stress on the server, or are you giving the client sensitive information, like the amount of money somebody has? Well, if you fall into any of those categories, and I'll be covering more, you guys need to fix those. And let's dive into all the topics that you guys should know about and see if you guys are making these mistakes. So in a previous video, I've covered the first topic, um, and that is using tween service on the server and putting unnecessary stress on the server like animation. So what I have here is three blocks and in a server script, I am tweening those to move up 10 studs and to go back down and to also repeat infinitely. So that's uh, this code here. And we don't wanna be doing this. We do not want to be using animations on the server. This causes unnecessary stress. Um, the server should never have to deal with visual animation. The client should only have to deal with that. So even as I covered earlier, going into your game, going up to the view tab and network, uh, we have incoming overall, and it is at a 4.6 at the moment in that range area. We do not want to be doing this. Uh, not only is using tween service on the server really bad because it looks, it doesn't look good. It's There's a lot of jittering. Uh, you guys can probably see that. Um, but it, not only does that, but there's also extra server. So not only does this look bad, but also the server is stressed out the entire time the game is running because of these animations. Mind you, there's only three and our overall incoming is already at almost a five. So how do you really fix this? Well, all you need to do is just put this script on a client. So you would just copy this and put it in a client script, or you also could change the run context to client and then put it in starter player scripts. Uh, that'll do the same thing. This up here might error out because it might not be loaded. So you would probably want to say like wait for child part uh, as well as wait for child part two and wait for child part three here. So part two, part three, if you have all those parts in your game. Ex oh, okay, never mind. Uh, so going into the game again, we will see at our incoming after the initial game is done, it is down to a 0 0.3. That is really good. The server no longer has that stress and our animations are silky smooth they look amazing now uh they look even better on my screen than what probably you guys can see but they look a lot better now that we've uh put this code into a local script running on the client okay so my next point is is you guys should not be giving the client sensitive information and along with that do not trust the client with the information that it has because exploiters manipulate the client so that they can change stuff for themselves uh but so that's where filtering enabled comes into play so it helps stop exploiters because uh when they exploit the effects are only damaging themselves because they cannot access the server so they're only damaging themselves so that means the client is it's up for grabs if you know what i mean it's bad um because the client can have all this information and you shouldn't be trusting it. So if we had something like currency in our games, like leader stats, uh, I'm just gonna type this out real quick. Let me get this done. So I have my currency set up here so that our player will have their own set amount of cash when they join the game. Mind you, this is done on a server script. Uh, so we can do stuff like data stores, save your stuff and uh, things like that. So if you are checking a player's currency, like checking for the amount of cash they have, uh, checking, you know, the amount of cash they have as well as uh, increasing their cash, that once needs to be done on the server again so we can save it and so that number can be trustworthy because the client, if we go into the game and head over to our players, uh, let me remove this and go to our players. We have our cash up here. I'm gonna go in my player and we have our leader stats cash here. So I'm gonna change it on the client. 
I'm gonna change it to 500 cash. Mind you, it updates up here on our client, but if we go to our server, that number is not changed. This is because of filtering enabled. So we can trust the server with our currency because if the client tried exploiting and giving themselves uh, a lot more money, then that's not trustworthy. That's not a true number. They did not earn that. So we can trust the server with the amount of currency they have. That's why you would use remote events. If you're on a client checking to see if a player had enough money to buy something, you would send a remote event checking uh, if they have enough money because the server is more trustworthy than what the client is. Same thing for displaying currency too. You would want to do it on the server because again, it's more trustworthy. So if you are performing something on the client, don't always trust the information it is giving you because exploiters and stuff like that on the client can change their own personal screen uh, which can change the local script. So if we had a local script uh, that updated a text label with the amount of money a player has all the time, that might not be trustworthy. So we use a remote function to go over to the server, get the amount of money they have, send it back to the client, and then display it. Because easily on the client, we can set our cash to a, a billion and it would update on the text. But if we had it, uh, so we checked it on the server, it would update, it would help our game. So lesson learned here, do not trust the client with information and don't give them sensitive information because they can easily manipulate that and just cause havoc in your game. So now that I've covered those topics, I want to go back to my first topic about the server and client stuff about how you shouldn't be animating on the server. You guys might have the question of, did what should I be doing on the server and what should I also not be doing on the client? The client is meant to be doing animation stuff and fast calculations. The server is better built for uh, physics simulations, pathfinding, like AI stuff, procedural generation, uh, stuff that client should not be doing, stuff that probably your device should not be doing because um, the server can do stuff like that. If it doesn't on the client, it'll overwhelm it. So this kind of goes hand in hand here because if you do animation on the server, stuff that it's not supposed to be doing, it will overwhelm it. If you do big calculations and stuff the client should be doing, it will lag. So you have to know the jobs of the server and client and know whether this goes in a server script and this goes in a local script. And since because the server and client both have their own jobs, that's why we even have remote events and remote functions, even though you probably shouldn't be using those anyway because of different reasons, like you should use custom stuff. But anyways, that can be another video. Uh, so we have like these remote functions and events to communicate between the server and client, and we can get different values from them. And so we can uh, combine those two jobs together and we can combine trustworthy values with performance. So if you guys are doing stuff like this and not uh, giving the server and client their proper jobs and managing them correctly, then your game will be laggy and it just won't be a good experience further developing in your game. So I totally recommend, I mean, you should be already doing this already too fix those problems and get into the habit of doing the correct things and using remote events because uh, this is why Roblox updated a few years ago to be compatible with everything and yeah. If you guys did learn something from this video or you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. If you guys have any video ideas, uh, leave a comment down below. If you have a question on anything or if I should cover something. And yeah, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace.